this spring shot off of the trampoline. It went right through the trampoline surround plastic and probably through these pickets or directly over top of it and it smashed into the house. I'm lucky it didn't break the glass. So among the three or four ways that you're likely to get hurt on a trampoline, three or four hundred that is, one way that you don't think of getting hurt is by having an ejected spring clock you in the face. But these springs are under considerable tension, and so it is something that we really should be considering. Here's our culprit right here. I'll move it into the shade so that we can see it better. This nylon strap is connected to the trampoline's canvas, and you can see that over time, the thread starts to give up because it's under constant pressure and there's UV damage over time. The strap is most likely to fail while the spring is stretched. And since it just clicks in here, a stretched spring that gives here turns into a dart that goes flying. And this thing is heavy enough to cause some serious pain. What we need is a super easy and cheap fix, and I have one in mind for five bucks. Also, I'll show you how to repair one of these because we don't need to throw away the trampoline over one broken spring. Before we go on, a safety warning. Uh, some of you will note that by the time the thread gives a little bit that a spring ejects, it's a symptom of a bigger problem and your trampoline's about to go. Yes, that is the case, but as long as we can render these not harmful if they eject, we can squeeze another two or three years out of the trampoline. Because it only takes a few minutes to sew one of these back on. And as long as you haven't lost two or three in a row, it probably hasn't caused any damage to its neighbors. If you've ever looked at a garage door, you'll notice that the springs have cables that run through them. And that's so, in case a spring breaks, it captures the fragments. Now, running a line through of all of these springs, that's just not practical here because of the number of them. But what we can do is connect all of these together. And we'll get to that in a bit, but first, let's repair this. Dig up some needle nose pliers, a lighter, and we're going to be using some 10 pound fire line. It's a braided, super strong fishing line, and we're going to use it just like you would a needle and thread. This stuff is way stronger than your run-of-the-mill thread, and it doesn't degrade in sunlight very quickly. You can't really cut it, it's that strong, so that's what the lighter is for. Oh, and this is a cool trick. You can keep your fishing line in this. It's for Teflon tape. It's kind of like a dispenser, and you can just pull out what you need. I've pulled out about two feet of thread. I'll cut it there. It's easy enough, since we already have the pliers and a lighter out, to put the pliers like this and melt these two pieces of nylon together. Once it liquefies, smash it like that, and then it will fuse. And that way it can't shift on us. Next we put it back in between these two layers where it belongs. And let's begin. We're sewing through quite a few layers here, so the pliers will make it easy on us to come back through. Tie it into a simple overhand knot, just so we don't lose our progress before we get started. Double the knot up, and we're ready to go. Protect the part that you don't want to burn with the pliers, and then just burn off your excess. It looks as though, from the factory, this came with seven lines, seven stitches. I don't know if I'll go that far, but I'll give it a fair try. Watch what I do here. I throw this in every few stitches every so often. I'll leave some excess 
so this one doesn't get pulled up tight or down tight rather and then when I come back through I pull it up through it so watch as I pull this tight it becomes a kind of knot where it grabs the previous stitch and I might come back through a second time and when I do that it gets really tight it becomes like a knot it's so tight in fact that it that my needle broke off really you can think of what I'm doing here as sort of regular maintenance you should be checking your trampoline periodically and making sure that these stitches look intact and then you know fix the ones that look like they're gonna go before they go anything that you want to keep is worth some maintenance The last couple times, the last couple times I did this, I just laid on the trampoline and did it. One of the great things about having a trampoline, especially as you get older, is that they're great for just laying on, reading a book, daydreaming and staring at the sky. <laughs> I've had my share of jumping and flipping and such, and now I kind of enjoy a trampoline for much more peaceful purposes. I'm not even sure that I recommend you do this. It's up to you. There's quite a used trampoline market out there. So it's not always sensible to waste your time doing this. But I do it. And there's no reason why you can't. And certainly, if your trampoline is really one of those expensive ones, then it probably is sensible to learn how to repair it. It's not rocket science. It's just self-reliance. And in fact, it's a bit on the shameful side, just how much stuff we throw away. I would rather lay here in this field sewing and take a trip with the truck to go pick up a new trampoline. Notice that I'm doing one of those through stitches this time. Can you see it going through there? Through the loop. And as the loop starts to tighten, I go around the loop one more time and pull tight. Try to finish with a knot. There's no more thread for me to continue making stitches, so I'll burn it off there. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to be two feet of thread. If it's two feet of thread, it'll be plenty strong. And while I'm at it, I'm going to repair this one too, because it looks worse than any of the others. Before we do any repair to the stitching, we want to take the tension off. If you don't have one of those spring tools, a spring can work. At least right up until the last spring. Then you'll have to figure something out. And for this one, there's still some thread remaining, so I'll give it about a foot of fire line. And in the meantime, I can put the one I just repaired back on. Don't worry, it won't break. Told ya. The last spring can be tough. But here's the trick. Use two hands. You can pull on the spring this way a little bit and then pull with your second hand here. Also lean into it. This is not the best tool to help you out, but it will work. The spring tool works the best. But another thing that you can do is just bend a scrap piece of wire like this around one of your fingers and then same thing. Use two hands. Don't try to do it all with one hand like this. That's too much. This other hand isn't doing anything, so you might as well use it. Next, paracord. 
five thirty seconds, fifty foot roll. It's about five bucks. Now this should be enough because this is a fourteen foot trampoline, and fourteen times pi is less than fifty feet. What are we doing? We're going to connect all of these triangles in one loop so that if one of these breaks over, under, over, under, over, under. If one of these breaks, at least in theory, what will happen is the triangle, this metal triangle thing, will get yanked forward really quickly with the spring, but then since it's a loop that goes the whole way around, it will grab it and stop it, and the spring should fall safely into the grass under the trampoline. Considering how easy this is to do and the low cost, it's worth the effort. Okay, I'm going to string it all the way around and then we'll tie both ends to one of these. Be back in a moment. All right, all done. This strings all the way around. And back at this end, I have a figure eight. Why a figure eight? Because it's one of the strongest knots. And if you don't know how to tie one, I have a video that will tell you how. We're just going to follow the existing figure eight right back around. It's not as hard as it looks. You just copy what's already there. tinker with it until you get something that looks roughly like this. And we should be able to pull this slack out by pulling this. That's pretty tight. Now we're going to repeat the same thing. Figure eight first. Next we pass through the triangle, and finally we repeat our figure eight one more time. Follow the path right around. Last step, pull it as tight as we can and try to work all the slack out through the knot and out this side. That way we can get this knot as tight as possible. This takes a lot of practice. Once you can identify which half it is here, you can pull it through and then guide its slack back around. And you just repeat that as many times as you can tolerate. That's tight enough for me. Definitely want to burn the end. Paracord's funny like that. It will fray if you don't. Turn it into a liquid and all of the threads will become one. Okay, I got it pretty tight. Let's call it taut. It's pretty easy to imagine what would happen now if a spring were to eject. It would try to take this triangle with it, but the triangle is gonna quickly snag this. And so the spring is gonna go like that and fall down. We're going to perform an experiment just to make sure that this works. We have a ratchet binder, which attaches to the other side of the frame and it is putting under tension this string that attaches to a second triangle instead of the normal triangle that the other springs are attached to. And to this replacement triangle, the spring's attached. Notice that the replacement triangle also goes through our loop. 
And so if I sever this, it will shoot forward. And the idea here is to prove that the spring doesn't go that way. First, we need to put this spring under a whole lot of tension, right to the point where this string is about to break. We need to get this well beyond what it would normally be on a bounce. Okay, uh, I think I'm satisfied with that. Okay, try not to flinch. You should be safe behind the camera. I'd call that a success. Next trial. Oh, tight enough. Next trial. In this trial, I want to push this hook down out of the way because it got caught on the last one. Believe it or not, and it ended up hooked there. Okay, it's good for a couple more years. A trampoline is a classic case of risk benefit. As soon as I got my own house, first thing I did was buy myself a trampoline. And that was quite a number of years ago, ago now. So a trampoline, dangerous though it might be, it's just a must have entertainment. Hopefully this will make it a little bit easier to maintain and a little bit safer for you.